So I've been talking about the academic literature and having the groundbreaking papers as kind of a starting point and then going into the less influential stuff. And in the last video, I mentioned how different papers will be useful to you at different times and how you have to quite quickly do an assessment of where your attention needs to be. So um, there needs to be some kind of process of filtering. So I'm going to share with you what I do, or what I did during my PhD. Now, a lot of people try to organize the literature thinking about um, software or having a, a matrix of notes. You can actually do things much, much, much simpler. And all you need is a pen, basically. So when you look at the literature, try to do a quick assessment of its quality and relevance, and then you can rate it on a scale from A to D. So A being the top rated, D being the lowest rated. So the A rated papers, there'll be relatively few of these. And these will be the ones which have either had a big impact on the field, so they're really important, really influential, or they are really important and relevant to your research. Okay, so there'll be some which are generally very important, some which are specifically very important just for you. Okay, these there'll be relatively few of. So throughout your PhD, you might find 10 to 20 of these over the course of several, several years. So these are the ones where if you took these out, your work would be completely different or the field would be completely different. So they're, they're quite rare. These are the ones you'll probably read several times throughout your PhD. So you need to really spend time with them, understand them and come back to them time and time again. Then you will have the B-rated papers. And these are perhaps less important, but still interesting and relevant. And maybe they have a, a slight influence on the way you think or the way you go about your research. So there'll be more of these. So they'll be high quality, relevant to what you do, they will make you think at least a little bit, um, but they're perhaps not absolutely essential top rated stuff. So there'll be slightly more of these. Then you have the C rated papers. So this will be the, um, the bulk of the kind of good work in your field where it's perfectly good, interesting work, but it's not really that important. So it doesn't have a big impact on you, you know, it's just okay, you know, quite interesting, just okay. It might be extremely relevant and useful to somebody else, but not to you. Then you have the D-rated papers. There'll be thousands of these. And these will either be low quality or just not at all relevant. So don't fall into the trap of thinking just because something's published in a peer-reviewed journal that it's good or that you have to cite it. No, the bulk of them will be either you know, irrelevant or low quality. You don't need to spend any time on these. So when you look at a stack of papers or a load of search results, what you wanna do is try and quickly filter the papers into these four categories. So the ones which are D-rated, you just you know, move on quickly. The ones which are A-rated, you take your pen, you print, out the, you print out the paper first, you take a pen and you draw a big star on the front or a big A with a load of stars. So you can find it easily again. The B-rated ones, you print them out, you save them, and then you know you can refer to those as and when you need. The C-rated ones, you can you know keep those in a in a folder for for a rainy day, right? So you might come back to them. Now a lot of people worry about getting this categorization right, but the thing is that, as I said last time, it's an iterative process. So you can read a paper once, categorize it, filter it into one of these categories. But then maybe in six months time or two years time, you realize actually, you know, that's not that important. Or you come back to one of the C rated papers and you think, oh, actually this is really useful, but maybe you just weren't ready for it at the time when you initially looked at it. So really it's a system for just deciding where your attention needs to be. And then you can spend more time with the ones which are more important and more relevant. So what you can then do is build up this foundation of knowledge. And basically the way you know if you have that is if you're able to have a conversation with another academic in your field about what is happening in the literature. 
So you carry that base of understanding with you. It's not locked away in software or locked away in notes. It's in your head. But you might not remember all of the details. You might not remember exactly who published this thing or exactly who said that. But if you have this overall picture or this underlying understanding, what you can then do is go back to the literature and find the relevant stuff as and when you need it. And that's what you know, real academics do. You know, they don't remember every paper, but they know where to look when something's relevant, when something comes up. So that is what you want as your, as your foundation, and it all comes from this quick initial filtering, which you can do with pen and paper, and it doesn't require any software, and it's really, really easy.